55 degrees, so beautiful in terms of the temperatures. Here's Will Walsh's, Will Walsh's first pitch is fouled away. But it is windy. Winds are 23 miles an hour to the southeast. It is. It's blowing deep out into right center right field. I think we have a chance to see a few balls get over that right field wall today. Swing to miss there on the off-speed pitch. Pitcher's count here for Walsh. Walsh on the year. Two and two. Like you mentioned, in 25 innings pitched. Has struck out 24, so those punch out ratings exactly where you want them. Yeah, especially this time of year as well. You know, he doesn't have that many innings it, only at 25, but 24 strikeouts over 25 innings, something to be perfectly okay with. That one fouled away by Bateman. Bateman batting 336 on the year. And when you look at what Bre Brett Bateman, the junior from Arden Hills, Minnesota, has done, I mean, he's 18th in the Big Ten in batting average and 22nd in the Big Ten in hits. Yeah, and entering the series, he's reached base. Uh, it would be seven of his last eight ball games. So he's eight for his last ten reaching base, and he has the best average on this Minnesota team. And he keeps that average up, Bobby. Reaches on a single up to dead center. So the leadoff man for Minnesota. Save for the bag. First game of this series, a combined seven runs in the ninth inning, made it a wild finish. Minnesota jumped out to a 4-1 lead after the second inning. Anglum tied the game at four after hitting a three-run home run, but Bryce Matthews had an error that cost Nebraska, tying the game up to five. Buns walked in a run, and Minnesota ended up winning that thing 9-7. Safety squeeze bun over to Columbus and cannot get it to Walsh in time. And how about the squeeze bun there from Marilla? I mean, places it perfectly. By Brett out at second. Brett, Brett, Brett Bateman definitely a threat on the bases. That one's fouled up. It's a bunt. You don't see bunts have too much juice on them like that very often, That's Bobby. That's a high bunt, too. <laughs> that bunt went well above the screen and out of play. Now, Council, this was a player I said earlier you got to watch for. 259 average, four home runs. So there is a little power there. Infield playing in on the corners, though. One for eight in this series with two strikeouts. Sees that off-speed pitch outside. And again, notably his father, Craig, currently the manager of the Milwaukee Brewers since 2015. Craig also played 16 seasons in the MLB as there's a swing and a miss. Craig's had a lot of success up there in Milwaukee. Led a lot of those teams into the playoffs. Got Obviously. To, got to an NLCS not yes. too long ago. There's not that much talent up there in Milwaukee either, but he does a good job making it work. And a swing and a miss there, and Will Walsh gets a pivotal first out on the swing and a miss. 84 to 95 range, but when Walsh slows it up a little bit and puts some cut on, it's, it throws the batters off. He just goes right back at it again at 91 as well. Paints that outside edge of the plate. 0 oh and 1 count here. One out with two runners on. It goes back to the outside edge there, 89 miles an hour. And that's the thing as a lefty, you're able to, you're not throwing as hard. It's not like Chris Sale or any of those guys. He just does a good job painting zones. Swing and a miss there. Back-to-back -back punch outs for Will Walsh. A great way to go off speed. He decides to go off speed and get him swinging. I mean, that's exactly what you could use, especially in the case of Walsh. You know, you have a rocky first two batters, but you respond with Mazenga, and you go 79 mile an hour off-speed pitch to get him down swinging after he just seen three straight fastballs, it's going to work out really well. Now, Bobby, what's interesting about his approach is there's a beautiful, beautiful breaking ball right down the middle is that he worked from 91 to 89 to 79 and just kept slowing his pitches up, and Minnesota was biting there. Again, another beautiful breaking ball catches the inside of the plate. Yeah, beautiful pitch right at the knees. And you see Weber Neal's five home runs leads the Minnesota team as a freshman, might I add. A lot of young power in that bat. That one inside in the dirt. Something interesting about Weber Neal's, his grandfather actually played for the Braves, but back when they were in Milwaukee in the 1940s. So I think it's fair to say, Bobby, baseball runs in the family. I think that's a really safe bet. Off from Walsh, that one grounded over to carry a third, over to second, in time to Anderson and the Huskers.
head shake is Riley Swenson. Here's the first pitch from Holitz. Inside four strike one. Interesting thing about Holitz, in 51 innings worked this year, he's actually second in the Big Ten in ERA. It's a little shocking as well. 51 innings. He's not been that great in Big Ten play though. However, the ERA is a little high at 471. The whip is good though, 1.19. 19 strikeouts over eight walks in conference play. Didn't help for his Iowa that he really struggled in that game versus the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes are indeed a team that is rolling. Had a pivotal sweep of the Huskers last weekend. And part of the reason the Hawkeyes are flying and the Huskers have only won one game since as that one is fouled, or two games since as that one is fouled and sliced to the right by Bryce Matthews, who has had an excellent series going five for eight and scoring five runs. Yeah, it's been a great series for him as well. On top of that, four walks drawn in this series. He's so good at getting on base. He is the second best OPS in the conference right now behind Brock Freidenberg of Michigan State. And that OPS is 1297. Very high for this time of year. and just shows how talented of a player he is. And that's not the only thing Bryce Matthews is actually second in the Big Ten. He's second in batting average, second in RBIs as well. This is someone who has he swings and misses there. And there's the first strikeout of the day for Richie Holitz. Here's Casey Burnham, the grad student from Grand Island, Nebraska. Kansas transfer. The check swing there on the 92 mile an hour fastball for strike one. Burnham plunked on the play. And he'll advance to first. And Bobby, we brought this up and before we, you know, shot our open and did our pregame. That one inside four ball one. And correction still at the top. Schleiger Luke from Maryland with 18 hit by pitches this year. Burnham sitting at the lone spot in second now with 16 as Anderson fouls that one back. But what does that do for a team, Bobby, when you have a guy that is able to crowd the plate and he's not afraid to get plunked? The free runner, necessarily, assuming he doesn't leave the game injured. Just another free runner. Anderson sees that one, drives that one hard over to Mazanga, over to second in time to Council, and that one wide over to first. And Anderson reaches and will advance to second on the play as that one leaves the field. Went into the dugout. And that's the thing, Minnesota's defense is right now around middle of the pack in the conference. Yeah, and funny enough, Ike Mazanga playing shortstop today for Minnesota is second in the Big Ten in error, sitting at 12. But again, that one goes against Council. Swanson takes ball one. And Swanson's on a heater, Bobby. He is. He is on a heater. Obviously, this series, he's only three for eight in this series. However, two home runs has had a lot of RBIs driven in. A much better and improved season after down year last year. Swanson drives that one hard over to third. Stopped down by Perry. The throw not in time over to first. Swanson reaches safely first. Runners on the corners in the Huskers. Charlie Fisher, another grad student starting for the Cornhuskers today in that DH spot. He comes from Southern Mississippi. He fouls that one back. Spent four years down there at Southern Mississippi. And he's the first ever Nebraska player to wear the number 99. In baseball, that is, of course. 99's a good number. I would say so, yeah. It's better so. than, yeah. I don't know, what's your what's your favorite number? I would say three. Three? It's, it's the number I wore whenever I played football as a kid growing up. I'm a big two guy. You're a big two guy? So you're a big fan of Casey Burnham who wears the number two. Yeah, I wouldn't mind, you know. Put, put my name on the back of that. You, know, get, you get a little custom jersey. <laughs> so we're going to miss there by Fisher. You can't go wrong with seven, though. Seven's not bad. Lucky number seven. Uh, 
I don't know. Not I'm not I'm about I'd say neutral with the number seven. Fisher takes that one wide. That is a pass to ball, and scoring is Max Anderson, and just like that, with two outs. And that, you're gonna label that a passed ball. That's why Anderson was able to score. Defense just has not been there so far for the Gophers. Yeah, Swenson had a good block initially as Fisher fouls that away, but was not able to handle the bounce after it hit his padding. You know, Swenson, he started on Friday. Usually they would go Weber Niels as the main catcher on this Golden Gopher team. So obviously just a little bit of familiarity could be a long could go a long way with Holitz and Swenson. Hitters hit 211 with two outs against Richie Holitz this year. Huskers playing those numbers positively as Fisher sees another ball there. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Not a 2-2 two -two ball game though. But not a 2-2 two -two ball game. Could have had all the twos. <laughs> I think there might have been a couple times. There might have been once in like a second inning where it was a 2-2 ball game and I was able to make that call. <laughs> and that's a good day when that happens. Breaking ball outside. And it's nearly in the right-handed batter's box and it's full count. Gabe Swanson, the runner on second. Holtz is trying to do the best to hold his composure after the defense has let him down on a few straight occasions. Again, that run unearned to Holitz, and Anderson scored. Swing and a miss by Fisher, and Holitz gets out of it before the Huskers can put on any more runs with further damage. It's a 1-0 ball game. Heading into the top of the second, Max Anderson scores on a wild pitch. Set to lead off are Perry, Bork, and Hokinson for the Gophers. Now it's initially ruled Initially ruled on our stat broadcast as a wild pitch, but I think passed ball there just with the way that the catcher, Swenson, was not able to handle it as there's the first ball thrown to Jake Perry. It's outside. That one low and outside as well. 2-0 and hitters count. I would agree. I think that does have to be labeled as a pass ball. Wild pitch is when that gets away from the catcher just isn't close. Blind wow. out of the air, Ben Columbus. A little bit of bunnies on that play, leaps up and makes the gold glove worthy catch to secure out number one. Wow, able to get up and take that one out of there. That looks like you at the wreck. <laughs> on some days, Bobby, right? <laughs> on some days. <laughs> Here's Kyle Bork. Sees ball one there. But Ben Columbus just you, you know what, when you're playing a corner position as that one is fouled back, whenever you're at third, like Dylan Carrier, you're, you're at first like Ben Columbus, it's important you have to be on the balls of your feet, ready to move at any moment, because when that contact's made, you are expected to make that play, as there's ball number two. Well, anywhere in the infield, really, I think you can make that case for Josh. You know, a hard hit ball right back to the pitcher, or second and shortstop, got to be quick. But I think especially with the corners, Bobby, with the way that the ball, the angle that the ball will be traveling at, especially, I mean, third base. Again, the hot corner, as they call it. It makes it that much tougher to make the play as that one is lined, and that one's fair in the left field. Bork has one. He's going for two, and it's a stand-up double for Kyle Bork and the Gophers, and it's a one-out double, the Gophers with a runner in scoring position. You know, you mentioned the hot corner. If that ball's a little bit lower, that is the, the definition of the hot corner for Dylan Carey, but just gets over his head, it gets all the way to the wall. Kyle Bork dug it out for a second. Doesn't have the highest batting average on this team, 184. But now you get to see a lefty on lefty matchup with Hokinson. Hokinson takes strike one from Will Walsh. Hokinson, no homers on the year. Batting in the eighth spot today. Breaking ball nearly clips him, and it does. 
And Hokinson's on first after a hit by pitch from Will Walsh. It wasn't intentional. I think it just left the hand of Walsh a little bit funny. And I guess that does grace his left or right arm, rather. Barely graces him. Barely, that. yeah. The way he got out of the way, I think he was saying, oh, I don't think that hit me. Hardstick told him, that's hit by pitch, go to first. Strike one there from Will Walsh. Again, Jason Hardstick. The umpire behind the plate, Shane Cannon over at first. At second, Chris Koski and Matthew Anderson over at third. So that one is outside for a ball. Huskers in their home reds with white letters and numbers, and the Gophers in their maroon jerseys with gold letters and numbers. Same uniforms they wore yesterday. Hope they washed them. I would hope so. That would be Minnesota. I mean, they have these gray jerseys with maroon pinstripes. I was kind of a big fan of those. You don't see too many pinstripes with gray anymore. Mm -hmm. I know the Twins did it back about in the uh, mid-2000s into the late 2000s. Gophers trying to, I guess, replicate what their pro team does, which I don't think it's an awful look. I, I'm a big fan of gray and pinstripes. I don't know if you're the same way. You know, I just don't think I've seen it enough to have a, a solid opinion, but I, I like, as there is a swing and a miss by Riley Swenson and Will Walsh with his third strikeout on the day than his last one versus Iowa. And Walsh's presentation of any breaking pitches he's thrown as that one is fouled way back. The presentation of every breaking pitch that he has thrown today, Bobby, it appears it's going to land, I'm gonna say on the inside part of the zone and then just completely drops. As that one's grounded over to short, Matthews over to Anderson in time at second. And the Huskers with one out, had runners on first and second. Minnesota was creating some noise, and Will Walsh with a strikeout and a big ground out conversion from Bryce Matthews to Max Anderson gets the Huskers out of that one. They lead 1-0 with Dylan Carey. Set to lead off in the bottom of the second here on Big Ten Plus. You don't have a hit, in theory. Well, hit by pitch, field his choice, and a pass ball. That's how you're going to get a run across. So Minnesota's still in line for the no-hitter, even though they may not win this ball game. You know, I would like to see a no-hitter where you don't win. You know, not saying in the case of Minnesota, just want to see it in general because I think it's such a unorthodox thing. It doesn't happen. It's so rare in the world of baseball to see such a thing. It's back-to-back. -back. Strikes to Dylan Carey. Carey, this series, it's not been that good. One in ten, three strikeouts, has one RBI and has scored one run, looking to pick up hit number two against Minnesota in as many days. Carry 288 average right now, so it has taken a little bit of a dive since the series has began, but four home runs and 23 driven in as well. Carry part of that recruiting class in 2022 as that one is grounded over to third, scooped up by Perry, the throw to first in time over to Niels. And I saw the pitch that George Clawson threw, and I just looked at it. I was like, wow, 104 at the college level? You don't see that unless it's Ben Joyce. Obviously, is in the Angels farm system now. I mean, you have to be throwing some serious gas to hit 104, even to hit 100 in college. I wish I could do that. Oh my, Sam. But that wouldn't have us of the joy of doing this game together. Exactly. Ex Looking at the bright side, Bobby, we love it. One and one count here to Ben Columbus, who had a gold glove leaping play at first base to save a base hit, and that's part of his perfect fielding percentage this year. Yeah, he's had a very good season in the field, especially defensively. Columbus fouls that one back and out of play. Two and two count. Columbus has had a solid series so far, three for six with three RBIs. He's only struck out twice. And Columbus, I feel, you know, he can give you a bit of that patience at times, but the numbers overall this year, 
29 strikeouts to 19 walks. Again, it ha you'll see flashes of patience, but Columbus is swinging most of the time. Most of the time, yes, which is odd since the fact that he plays a little bit of catcher too. And that one's driven out into center field. Back at the wall goes Bateman. And like a leaping catch running into the wall. Wow. Brett Bateman. Hope he's okay out there. But that wind with a mind of its own. So Ben Columbus robbed of at least a double on that one. Brings up Josh Karen catching today. And Holtz, I'm sure, is glad that now he has the defense behind him a little bit, unlike earlier where wasn't there a whole lot. Karen batting 282 this year takes strike one. He's another one. That one driven out to center field. Bateman's busy. Bateman makes a leaping catch. Back-to-back -back phenomenal catches by Brett Bateman to retire the Huskers. You know, not as rowdy as it is today but you know that can that can change i'm just happy it's sunny to be quite honest with you, know, you. just a few clouds in the sky first pitch to boston marilla is a ball outside at 75. now let me say this about boston marilla that's a fly ball into center field burnham step back makes the catch one away but what about boston marilla i mean he's six for seven this series i mean the team had five hits yesterday in that 18 to nothing loss to the Cornhuskers and nearly picked up his seventh hit of the series there. But this is a guy that's been the bright spot of this series. So I think that's something going forward to pay attention to that you know, if you can be a bright spot in such a dark series for Minnesota like it was yesterday, a dark game at least, that says a lot going forward. Council first pitch fouls it off behind him. 0-1 count. He struck out looking, struck out swinging rather, excuse me. His first time up, takes that one for a strike, two at 89 for Walsh. Yeah, the average sitting at 257, not totally. Oh, the two. sophomore infield wants it. Popped up, shallow right, coming on in is Evans. He calls off Anderson, and that is out number two. Evans was completely hauling his way from deep in right field into shallow right. I mean, his hat even came off. I mean, the wind is rolling at 23 miles an hour, and you can see the impact of the wind. That ball, that probably pops up right over around second base on a normal day, and somehow, some way, it works its way evenly between second and first. Mike Mazenga steps up to the plate. Mazenga, we touched on it yesterday with me and Jacob Schrantz. He went to state for ping pong. That's a, that's a relatively impressive feat for the fact that I'm awful at ping pong. Josh, I don't know how good you are at ping pong. But I didn't know that the state of Minnesota had ping pong either. That's really cool. I mean, Minnesota's a pretty big state. They've got a lot of high schools with a lot of good enrollment, and it's no surprise that they're able to be versatile in the sports that they offer. So, I mean, I, was a, I had a ping pong table growing up in our basement. And, you know, you practice, you know, had a little rivalry with, with Dad growing up, but... Uh, yeah, you know, he beat me a couple times. I'll give him that. 3-1 <laughs> to Mazenga. In the air in the center field. Burnham shades over to his right. Makes a diving catch. Oh, no, no. That hit the turf. I thought he had taken that one away. It, the ball was in his glove momentarily, but I think when he hits the ground, it, it jars loose. And you know, He's been very good out in center field this year. You're kind of used to that, and that's why I jumped the gun, thinking that he had made that diving catch. We have a runner at first with two outs for Weber Niels. Freshman catcher, five home runs on the season, takes a first pitch ball up and in. Going back to ping pong, did you ever beat your dad, or did he uh, only beat you? Or was it close? No, it was pretty close. I mean, you know, I was a, I was a young one growing up when we had that table from probably around, I want to say nine years old to 14, so, you know, age and experience was in his favor, Bobby, but... Definitely got a couple good wins off of him. But our basement ceiling was low, so I'd go to spike it, and uh, I'd lose my paddle to the pipes. I think I almost broke one a couple times. I was an aggressive hitter. Oh, my goodness, Josh. You, were, you must have been 
you must have been a pain to play against sometimes just for the fact that you would spike the ping pong ball. Do you ever break a ping pong ball? Throw over to first, now over to second. Gets a little wild. So Mazenga is going to reach second base safely. The throw over to Matthews was short hopped. Nebraska lucky that didn't go into left field. Yeah, Anderson was actually in a perfect spot to come in and back Matthews up as the ball did take an awkward bounce. And even with a one and two count with two outs, Minnesota's one decent hit away from tying this ball game. Minnesota four hits so far today, Nebraska zero. One, two to Niels, chopper over to third. Throw over from Dylan Carey is in time, and that is how the top half of the third comes to a close. One hit, no one crosses the plate for Minnesota. Nebraska do up with Cole Evans, Bryce Matthews, and Casey Burnham. Cole Evans leading, leads things off here, bottom of the third. First pitch strike. So have you ever seen Star Wars or no? Yes. Okay, because I get a lot of fleck for not having seen it. I didn't start watching it until I was like 16. I never watched it in general. Ah. 0-1 oh, to Cole Evans. Up and out for ball one from Holitz. Holitz well, a very good outing thus far. As good as you can ask for, minus a little bit of defensive miscues early. Yeah, and two innings of work has allowed one run, which was not earned due to a pass ball and has two punch outs. 1-1, one, one, just misses. Counters the two balls and one strike. Yeah, Holitz has been working really quick. I think uh, this is a pitcher that definitely has benefited from the pitch clock this year. He has good stuff. 2-1, catches the bottom corner for a strike. But are you a fan of the pitch clock? Are you not? Where do you stand on the pitch clock, Josh? Uh, I've come to like it. It's not so much about moving the game along, but it's it's just all the mound visits, all the stepping, uh, timeouts by pitchers and batters. I think it's uh, doing a lot of good for the game and forces people to think faster. 2-2, two, two, skied. Right field, shallow right field. Backing up is Council. It cannot make the grab. Evans digging for second. He is safe. And it's a leadoff double for Cole Evans. Tied for second in RBIs with Brock Radenberg of Michigan State. And he takes a first pitch ball. And we talked about a lot of the stats, Bobby, that he's second in. We mentioned OPS. You just mentioned batting average RBIs. But he's tied for third in home runs, fifth in runs, and sixth in hits in the Big Ten. I mean, what can't this guy do? I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. I yeah. think he can <laughs> juggle. 1-0. Skied into center field. Backing up his Bateman. He will be there to make the grab. Evans tags from second on to third. Throw goes wild to third base. And Cole Evans reaches third safely. We'll see, but I don't think it can get much easier than that. Casey Burnham steps the plate. He was hit by pitch his first time up. Swings at a first pitch strike at 90 miles an hour from Holitz. Runner at third, one away. That runner is Cole Evans. The 0-1 to Burnham upstairs for a ball. Infield playing very shallow here. All four infielders are positioned at the edge of the grass. Look at second base and first base. They're all of, what, 20 feet apart? And that's, you know, for a left-handed hitter, that's exactly where they like to put it. 1-1, one, one, up and out, ball two. It's a very odd defense. You don't see a whole lot of this, especially second and first being that close. You know, and it's not like the second baseman's playing on the edge of the outfield grass. He's playing on the edge of the infield grass. And he's playing more toward the first base side, which is allowing that gap right up the middle. 2-1, shot foul. Allows that gap to be wide open. And if he moves any closer toward first, then you're talking about that power swing. A sweet spot for a lefty hitting it right into right center field. On well, the other thing, look at right center field, wide open. It's wide open between Bateman and Hokinson. Two balls, two strikes, runner at third. Swing and a miss. Burnham goes down, swinging for out number two, and that's a big second out. So if there's a Nebraska player today that hits two home runs, 
since the year 2000. This will be the only team that has nine individual multi-home run game performances. First pitch, did he go? No. Well, it just says a lot about the work that this team put into the off, swing, uh, the off season, working on their swings. I mean, it's so, it's so crucial in the development, especially of your power hitters, right? You want to work on that cut angle of the bat. You almost, you don't totally want to get under the ball because then, you know, that results in a pop out. Is there 1-0, they're going to say he did go for a swing, one ball, one strike. But going back to that, it shows how, to, how Bolt is as a coach. It's been by far the biggest challenge. That 2022 season to now, he had to look at it and evaluate and say, okay, that last year was not, that wasn't it. 51 home runs, this team is capable of a lot more, and they've proved it this year. It's a 1-1 sky. Foul ground, shading over. The catch will be made by Weber Niels, and that is how the third inning comes to a close. Kind of a tough play by Niels, but he gets out of it. Through three, Nebraska leads it. One nothing over Minnesota, but Josh, they finally got their first hit. Anderson and Evans just constantly having to communicate, and it looks awkward at times. We've seen a couple plays in that second base to shallow right field range for both teams, and you got to imagine there's a lot of talking on the field, but it just looks awkward with all the wind that is occurring right now. Yeah, especially on a day like today where we discussed that with Council and Hokinson. Last inning, there's a miscommunication out there. 2-0, ground ball over to first. Speared by Columbus as he touches first, out number one. Columbus does a good job of keeping it in play and has great footwork there, right? He's able to position himself, keep his balance, and that can be the toughest part when chasing a ball, going foul, but it's called fair. You know, you see that line and it kind of messes with your mind, but keeps his body in good form and is able to make the play. Kyle Bork ahead of the count, 2-0. Zach Kerbow is in the dirt. Two out of Bork in the air into center field. Coming on in is Burnham, and he will make a almost diving catch as that goes by him. Bork digging for a second, and he will have a stand-up doubles. And that is the second time today where we've seen Casey Burnham miss a play out there in center field, which is very, you know, unorthodox of him to do. Yeah, uncharacteristic to say the least. I don't know about I don't know about the dive here. I think you have to understand that the impact that the wind's having. I love the confidence from Burnham and Center to go and make those two plays, but you also have to be realistic. This isn't an 18-0 game or a 10-0 game like it was at one point yesterday. This is a 1-0 game where the wind is taking the ball in directions that... Ground ball to Anderson, throw over to first, out number two, but you're right, you know, the wind is gonna carry that ball one way or another. It's not, it's not swirling, but it's pushing it. Mm -hmm. And it's forcing it to drop, I mean, that ball, it looked to appear to be going a little toward left center, and then the wind knocked it down right about dead center. And I think for all the outfielders. First pitch to Riley Swenson, he fouls it off. Anything hit shallow, let it bounce. Play it safe, just give him the one base and leave it at that. I don't know if there's anything. Anything that's going to be hit shallow was originally meant for the pitcher today. Let's just say that. Oh, one swings right through it, four strike two. Very good breaking ball from Will Walsh. Swenson, including today, has struck out five times this series. He's 0 for 7, looking for his first hit. It's a high fly ball into left center field. Burnham loses his hat, doesn't lose the ball though, makes the catch, and the top half of the fourth inning is over. Only two hats fly off the heads of Nebraska players as we go to the bottom of the fourth, one nothing Nebraska on Big Ten Plus. good second season here. Yes, I mean, you go back to 2022, 20 appearances, nine starts, batted 154, only six hits. First pitch hits him, the only pitch that he sees. In the ballpark, and it gives them a lot of options on the offensive side of the ball. First pitch to Charlie Fisher, misses down and in for ball one. Fisher on the series is now two for four after he struck out swinging his last time up. 
But two RBIs looking to up that. Driving in Gabe Swanson. 1-0. That misses down and in. Two balls, no strikes. Again, I love what the Huskers did. And, you know, Fisher's part of this conversation. Bringing in that veteran leadership that they really, I think, desperately needed after last year. You, know, you have that great season in 2021. Uh, what they did in that Fayetteville Regional. Swing and a miss on 2-0 count. I think you bring in a lot of veteran guys like Fisher and like Casey Burnham, and they, they really help bring you back down to reality, remind you of the basics, and remind you why you love playing the game. And Fisher and Burnham have been, I think, such a big part of why this team has had the success that they had. 2-1 fouled off behind us. And now retreats back into play and is caught by the third baseman, Kyle Perry. Right there, able to say it again. Yeah, then we have a little insurance on that on that statement. First pitch to Dylan Carey misses down and out. 81 mile an hour pitch. Carey now one for 11 in this series, looking for his second hit. Swanson not too dangerous around the bags, only three for five stealing this year, so has been pretty successful when he's done so, but doesn't take the opportunity that much. 1-0 misses. You look at the right side of the infield, Josh, wide open. Obviously, you have Niels at first. He's covering because you have a runner there. But then Brady Council, he's playing almost parallel to the pitcher when you look at it from our angle. 2-0 swing and a miss at a fastball at 89. 2-1 count. Well, it shows what Minnesota is expecting out of the Nebraska hitters. They, they aren't really late to hold its pitches, which allows for you to pull opposite field. They're jumping on his pitches. That's why everything is going strong side. So they're playing for that momentum. 2-1. That misses down and in on carry. Three balls, one strike. Swanson at first, one away. Ben Columbus stands on deck. Three one, inside, and Carey draws a walk. By Minnesota today, Richie Holitz has been on three and a thirds innings pitched, one run not earned, three punch outs. First pitch well inside on Columbus for ball one. Lucky that didn't get to the backstop. Yeah, otherwise you have bases loaded if it, if it hits him or if it goes to the backstop. All runners advance and sitting around 57 pitches right now. Just something to keep an eye on at this point in the game is we're only in the bottom of the fourth. 1-0 to Columbus. Just missed outside for ball one. Ball two rather, 2-0 count. 75 mile an hour curveball that just missed. Tough one for Holitz there. It's sometimes when you cannot get those calls from the ump, it might get in your head a little bit. So it's important to retain your composure and not let those calls bother you. Just move on to that next pitch. Because one well struck, or one ground ball struck the right way could get him out of this inning. Holitz steps off. Now resets, pitch clock also resets. Two on, one out. 2-0 -oh count to Columbus. Upstairs, three balls, no strikes. You give him a green light if he sees a fastball middle middle? I was just going to ask you that. On a windy day like today and with how Minnesota's been fielding the ball, they have two errors. Go for it. Go for it? Go for it. Three balls, no strikes. Two on, one out here, bottom four to Columbus. Saw that fastball, called the strike. However, that fastball not middle, middle, more inside. Had a little bit of cut on it, working its way to the inside. It's those cut fastballs that when they have heat on them, that's where it can really throw you off because it's never a dead set off-speed pitch or a certain type of breaking ball. It's got that weird cut, and it doesn't allow you to make a quick decision. 3-1, Columbus fouls it off. Going to be kicking himself that that was most likely ball four. And the count is run full. Three balls and two strikes. But you have to figure for Columbus, if he gets solid contact on this toward the outfield, Swanson will at least advance to third if it is anywhere in the vicinity of right center field to dead right field. Three, 
Three and two to Columbus. Took it for ball four and the bases are loaded. Force out is anywhere. You have the bases loaded, one out, and Josh Karen batting 285 home runs, 22 driven in. First pitch, misses low for a ball. And holds. he's lost a little bit. Doesn't really have that command right now. Yeah, you, you, know, you wonder what was said in that in that pitching, in that mound meeting, actually. But now you might want to consider after Karen, if this inning is still going, having a meeting just about the approach of Holitz this inning. 1-0, Karen, that one gets away. Coming home to score is going to be Swanson, and the runners advance to second and third. It's 2-0 Nebraska. So Nebraska now two runs, only one hit. And so far, no hits in the inning for Nebraska. Runners at second and third. I'm sure Karen's looking for, why not? Let's get a, let's get a hit right here. Infield playing very shallow. A little more even this time out on the right side of the infield. Also takes away your chances of a double play. Karen, shallow ball into center field. That is going to get down. Two row, no, only one run is going to score for Nebraska. That's Kerry Columbus was held up at third. And it goes as an RBI single for Josh Karen. 3 0 Nebraska. That's a fly ball into left field, down the line. It's at the track, it's at the wall, it is gone. Cole Evans with a three-run home run to make it 6-0 Nebraska. Tattooed that baseball. His third homer of the year. And I think even without the win, this one's going, going, and it's gone. Oh, he knew right away, too. Love the bat flip. Bat drop and everything. Nice ball for the family. I take that one home for a souvenir. And First pitch to Matthews is a ball. Matthews at the top of the order, 0 for 2 today. And Matthews does have an on-base streak. Ooh, that hit his head. I was about to say he's an on-base streak on the line. That's going to continue. Hopefully he's OK as that dinged off his helmet. Yeah, Holitz has completely lost it. This inning, the first run uh, not earned when Max Anderson scored, but this inning, Huskers have put up five runs. Matthews takes off ground ball. That gets through into right field. Matthews digging for third. Burnham is going to also dig for second. Matthews is going to go home and score as the ball got away from Hokinson out there in right field. It's an RBI double for Casey Burnham. It's a misplay with his glove, and it allows Matthews to round second and third. A nice two hopper through the infield. Gracefully works its way and look into the lefty there. Just another defensive mistake. This is an unearned run. As they say, Matthews advances to third on the hit. That was pretty evident, but going home, that was a result on the fielding error. And seven nothing is the score. Six runs here in the bottom of the fourth. The Everlong bottom of the fourth. And assuming we don't see a very odd double play turned here, Nebraska will bat around the order. Runner at second, Anderson at the plate. Reaches on the field, his choice his first time up. The 0-1, swings at it, skies it. I think that's going up behind us. That hit off the roof right above us. Heard that one. It did. I don't think it's going to come through the roof, though. Unfortunately. Not enough heat on that one. No, just not enough. 0-2 <laughs> <laughs> count. On the way to Max Anderson. 71 pitches for Holitz now. Burnham takes off. That's in the dirt. Throw down to third. Nowhere close in time. And it goes as a stolen base. Stolen base number eight. Eight for eight on the air, Bobby. And, you know, stealing third is no easy feat. It's an easier throw for the catcher to make, but... Burnham gets a great jump there. 
burns his way on the base path. Infield now is going to play in right on the edge of the infield dirt and infield grass. The one two to Anderson. That's a fly ball into center field. Backing up is Bateman. That is going to be caught. However, Burnham will score, and it's a sacrifice fly for Max Anderson. And just like that, Nebraska has batter on the order. You might not want to take that approach, but Bateman gets the job done, but so do the Huskers. Swanson shoots one into right track at the wall. The wind's going to push that out of here. Yowza. That one, it clears the Minnesota bullpen, clears those fences, and there's a few fans raising their hands in the air saying thank you to Gabe Swanson for that Sunday souvenir. That one, there were a couple of cars. I think if that ball's hit just a tad harder, we have a couple car alarms going off, Bobby. Hopefully it's not yours. It's not. Mine, okay. Mine's behind us. Good, we'll be good. okay. Swanson's now homered in every game this series. That one gets away. Luckily, no one's on base. First pitch to Charlie Fisher. Earlier in the inning, he fouled out, which was his last plate appearance. As Nebraska's completely bad around the order. Second time through. Second time Charlie Fisher has had to grab a bat this inning. 1-0 fouled off. That is off a pillar of the press box. you got to be dangerous with those when they come back off the press box or you know off the facing of the second deck. Lucky you're not a fan getting hit there. Senses have to be dialed in. All hands on deck. Sun peeks out. The 1-1 one -one to Fisher. Outside for a ball. Two balls and one strike. ERA for Richie Holitz now sitting at 379. Just a rough inning. Yeah. Very rough inning. Hit by pitch and two walks, which led to multiple runs crossing the plays. That's a called strike on Fisher. The count even two balls and two strikes. It hit by pitch, back-to-back -back walks on Dylan Carey and Ben Columbus. Karen had the RBI single after the pass balls. Here's the 2-2 from Fisher. That is going to get into right field and a base hit. And it's a two-out single. ability to just have that wide step and a role as Chapman when he was with the Cubs like that stride was seven feet long which is just astronomical to think about you have other guys like Chris Sale very tall lanky left-hander not saying Connor Woodgriff is the equivalent of Chris Sale is that's a ground ball picked at first by Weber Niels he touches first and that is how the fourth inning comes to a close so a very clean inning for Woodgriff however for the rest of the Minnesota defense that fourth inning was not ideal. Big fourth inning for Nebraska as they put up an eight spot. We go to the fifth inning, nine nothing Nebraska on Big Ten Plus. Of Big Ten baseball and the Huskers, at one point were up one nothing and hadn't even had a hit. Now they lead the hits department six to five and now lead nine nothing. Whoa. A lot of walks, a few hit by pitches, two home runs, but the big thing, Will Walsh, so far in three innings of work, he's, or four innings of work rather, only five hits allowed, no runs, three strikeouts. By now the question is, you know, you just sat for a while that bottom half of the fourth inning, does that hurt a little bit? Josh, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Responds with the strikeout right there. Yeah, Will Walsh, he is dialed in. Picks up strikeout number four on the afternoon and has only allowed five hits. Obviously, it's been a clean sheet so far. And you could just see he's locked in. His command has been great. Goes with the cut fastball there to the outside. And that's been his bread and butter on the day as this one has popped up and normally would stay in play, but into the grass in foul play for the fans. You could see. I mean, and it's a, it, I know it's barking in the park, but the kids running for that foul ball it reminded me of dogs going for a tennis ball. It just seems that way. There's a lot of a lot of youth has been at the Nebraska games the last two days, which is great. Class of 2020, what, 2029 through 2035 for Nebraska baseball? Does that sound right? Yeah, I would say so. It's going to make me feel old. We're getting old. We are. Here's Will Walsh. 
That one grounded over to second. Anderson scoops that one up cleanly, and it's routine, like taking a walk in the park on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Oh, but Bobby, no. <laughs> Not today. I'm a snow guy, as Will Walsh throws strike number one there. Don't get me wrong. I love me some snow. But not today. <laughs> Will Walsh, a beautiful breaking ball there for strike number two. 75 miles an hour. Brady Council who struck out back in the first swinging and flew out back in the third. Sharply grounds that one foul. And Dylan Carey was ready for it there. He was ready for it. You mentioned earlier, hot corner at third. That's going to happen. It's a good job mentioning that. Walsh's payoff. Low and inside. One and two the count with two outs. Council, the right-handed hitter. Grounds that one. Takes an awkward bounce over to Matthews at short. Matthews over to Columbus in time, and that's a one, two, three. Inning for Mr. Will Walsh on the mound for the Cornhuskers, and they get out of that one fairly quickly. He just had to get one out in order to end the inning. Not a whole lot else happened. Only had to do it in one pitch. There was his second pitch there for strike one to Ben Columbus. Nice breaking ball, working its way inside and then weaving its way back inside. Pitchers count here 0-2. Lead off hitters hitting 500 against Whitgriff. And a swing and a miss there by Ben Columbus. And the lefty, the southpaw for the Gophers, really works his way painting the zone. Gets a couple strikes down the middle, then works his way back inside and forces Columbus to really make a rash decision Decision at the plate. Here's Josh Karen. Karen flew out back in the second, singled back in the fourth over to center field. It was an RBI single. Karen with a hefty swing there. Swing and a miss on a 95 mile an hour fastball. Karen four for 10 in the series. Four ribbies. Grounds that one through the hole and it grazes off the glove of Mazenga. And Karen is on safely and that was a well placed hit. run homer that really broke this game wide open and he takes strike one and Karen on first one for one stealing this year not really expecting him to go Evans bats 283 with runners on sees that one inside and the Grand Island native has definitely left his mark on this game Going inside for another ball. Cole Evans home run, 98 miles an hour off the bat. 355 feet was the distance on it. I've had this discussion before. Would you be a fan of stat cast at college games? Oh, totally. I think it makes the game that much more interesting as that one gets by the third baseman, Perry. But Mazanga there to back him up and convert the out at second with Council. You know, 350, 360-foot homer. Granted, he will hit homers over 400 yep. feet, but... Even those simplest homers, 120 miles an hour yeah. off the bat. That is so stellar to do that and to see the short distance. And you can even have that type of speed on the long home runs as well. Something I'm a fan of, and especially in a day like today, expected batting average with the wind and all those factors. I know some people are like, oh, you know, I'm not a fan of that. It's just random numbers. No, I'm, I'm a big fan of the expected batting average just for the fact it's like it's such an interesting part of the game as a different element into it. So Matthews takes a hack out of that one and swings and misses one and two count. I, I think stat, uh, uh, stat cast adds a lot of factors to a game and I think for people who either like stats or don't, I think it just adds another another level that can help you better understand the game. I think the big thing with you know speed off the bat in terms of how hard and how fast pitches are hit 
it shows, okay, so-and-so is confident against this pitcher because you're not taking a swing like that against someone if you're not confident and it has a speed of 120 miles an hour off the bat. So then you start, you know, that, that helps you, uh, I think. More of an analytical approach? Yeah, it, it helps you talk about the playing okay. style, I think, yeah. of certain players. It helps you develop those conversations. As Matthew swings and misses, inning over. Huskers still lead 9 to nothing. who actually leads the Big Ten as good as his offense is. He actually leads the Big Ten in errors with 16 this year. Which is odd for the fact that Nebraska is the best defensive team. Fly ball Swanson makes an incredible catch out there in left field while losing his hat for out number one. You look appalled. I'm just watching the hat. The hat's 30 feet away from him. But yeah, Swanson, hat comes off. Takes about 10 to 12 steps and just lays out there to make the catch. I think he misjudged it for the sole purpose. He thought the ball was going to come closer to him with the win. First pitch is a ball for Weber Niels. I just think he thought, oh, I have a better chance to make this play. And then the wind just kind of died up top. So that's a chopped foul. But yes, Bobby, I was appalled. I was having fun watching that hat go. We've had a lot of hats fly off at players' heads today. Very windy day here in Lincoln. Yeah, it's just a little. Just a little Just bit. Just a little bit. 1-1 one, one misses inside. Two balls, one strike. Yeah, Will Walsh, the fastball has been good for him, but the big thing that he's been doing so well is that breaking ball on the inside of the plate. Fly ball, that is into center field. Burnham backing up towards the warning track, misses it, hops over the wall, and it grows. Oh, that's still in play. Digging for third is Weber Niels, and he will get in safely in a one-out triple. Josh, I thought that had hopped over the wall. Yeah, it, it was a weird optical illusion out there. So you see Niels, ball going, burn him back. So it takes that bounce off the padding, and it took such a high bounce that it looked like enough, it, it didn't even hit anything and that it would just continually go over the fence. And honestly, smart base running by Niels. He just kept going. If the Huskers don't have trouble handling that ball, that's in the right, coming on in. The catch is made by Cole Evans. Throw home is up the line, and Minnesota has their first run of the game on a sacrifice fly from Kyle Perry. Yeah, Perry does a good job of getting hold of the ball. A little bit of a mistake there whoa, by Walt. Whoa. They're going to say he didn't tag up. He's out at third because he did not tag up. That's the call that's made, and we're going to have a discussion about this. We'll stay here. I was about to write down, that's a sack fly. I think we figured it out. Minnesota on the board for the first time in two days. Kyle Bork steps up to the plate. Two doubles so far today. First pitch, outside for ball one. Bork the designated hitter for the Gophers this afternoon. 1-0 misses, two balls and no strikes. Yeah, two doubles on the day. That's two of the three extra base hits for Minnesota, each team with three extra base hits. That misses inside, three balls, no strikes. And Bobby, the, the funny thing is the numbers are pretty similar for both teams. That misses low, and it's a four-pitch walk drawn by Kyle Bork. But a little numbers comparisons here. Minnesota is six for 22 on the day, Nebraska seven for 22. Minnesota with one walk, Nebraska with two walks. Strikeouts five to four. Uh, well, not in favor of Nebraska. You don't want to strike out as a team. Each team with three extra base hits. Both teams combined four for 22 with runners on. A combined two for 15 with runners in scoring position. And a combined three for 14 hitting with two outs. So, Hokinson into right field. This ball is going to clear the wall in a home run. Hokinson left the yard rather quickly. Thought that had a chance to get down. And now three runs cross the play with two outs. 
and it's 9-3 to three, Nebraska. And those numbers now similarly creeping up to where Nebraska's, and that ball got out in a hurry. Left on that right side of the field, and that's exactly where the wind is at its strongest. It, I mean, the second it left the bat, the wind just said, I, I think that, as I was saying in pregame, the ghost of Christmas past or something gracefully guided that ball out, out past the fences. I mean, a ball like that is not getting out on a normal day, but... No, it is not. And the ball was not even hit sky high. Chopped foul for Riley Swenson. It was more of just a direct shot Grace, that just cleared the wall. Gracefully guided. <laughs> gracefully guided over the wall. What was your favorite uh, ghost of Christmas? What can I say? Past or present or Maybe future? ghost or present. Maybe. Future freaked me out, man. Yeah. yeah, future freaked me out. I like the past, hence, you know, I'm giving, yeah. giving the Ghost of Christmas past some love here. One, two, Riley Swenson goes down swinging. Good day for baseball. A few clouds passing by throughout the day sporadically. Otherwise, from that, been lots of sunshine. First pitch runs inside on Casey Burnham. Somehow didn't hit him for ball one. That's a few past balls by Swenson. I know that one officially doesn't go down because of runners advancing, but... Swenson's had a bit of trouble handling pitches behind the plate today. You have to wonder what those conversations might be like after this series going into next week. You know, whether it's an equipment issue or just the win today, you do want to have an answer, though, because some of those have hit his glove and just completely have gone awry. Two balls, one strike. Burnham has been hit by a pitch and has singled. That one runs inside on him as well. Three balls, one strike. Whit Griff right now swing, hitting about 94 on the radar gun. Yeah, and he's really hitting that left that left-handed batter's box. 3-1 call to strike, count is full. And continuing to go inside, his fastball's been good command on that inside edge of the plate, but that breaking ball, he hasn't been able totally to get that spin under control, and thus it hasn't dropped. 3-2, Burnham goes down looking. Has struck out 41 coming into today. Anderson fouls it off to the right side. And this is a guy I think if Minnesota can really get further into contention for playing in the Big Ten tournament, he could be big for you in those 7th, 8th, and maybe even ninth inning stretches. 0-1 misses outside at 97 from Whitgriff. One ball and one strike. Anderson 0 for 2 today. However, he has a fielder's choice and a sack fly. 1-1 one, one in the top of the zone, called a ball. Anderson, the Millard West product out of Omaha, Nebraska. 2-1, that is called a strike on the inside corner. Two balls, two strikes to Anderson. Again, like his infield mate, Bryce Matthews, fourth in batting average, fifth in OPS, ninth in total at-bats, just somebody who has continuously put pressure on opposing pitchers and defenses. Third in hits, eighth in doubles, tied for third in the Big Ten in homers. This is a guy, when he steps in the batter's box, he means business, and he's done so. 3-2, swing and a miss. Anderson goes down swinging. Out number two in three straight strikeouts for Whitgriff. First pitch to Gabe Swanson. Shoots that foul out of play. Out of the stadium for that matter. Four strike one. Swanson had that home run in the fourth inning that the wind did a great job pushing out of here. Pushed it well over the Minnesota bullpen. The 0-1 to Swanson misses inside. Four ball one. Swanson with 13 homers on the year. Also was hit by pitch. Hit by a pitch in the fourth. Swanson ground ball, that gets through into left field for a two out single. And that will put the Whitgriff strikeout streak to a close. It, it sometimes can have those questionable thoughts come into their minds as Griffin Everett is pinch hitting here for Charlie Fisher at the DH spot. Or sometimes 
you can see Perry coming over to make the play. It just gets by him, and Mazenka sliding almost at 180 degrees, even with the ground. He can't make the play. Everett bouncing ball over to second. Council flips over to Mazenga at shortstop. The sixth inning comes to a close. One hit. That was from Gabe Swanson. Yeah, that sidearm release it gives a different look to hitters, right? It, it adds the angle you're seeing it at. It completely changes the way you approach the ball. Brett Bateman one for three so far today. Singled in the first. Struck out his last time up as he takes ball one. Count even at one ball, one strike. A lot of the clouds have worked their way out of here of Lincoln. We had a few early on. 1-1. One, one. Down and out. It's been a beautiful day here at the ballpark. It has been. The fans are out. The families are out. Everybody in the grass, and the seats are filled, and the dogs are at the park, and everybody's enjoying this afternoon. As There's a strike there, and... Corbin Hawkins, last time out, pitched against UNO earlier last week on Tuesday in a no decision. 2-2, two, two, that upstairs for ball three. Continue. When two and two-thirds innings worked, allowed three hits, only gave up one earned run and had two strikeouts, and that was a part of... There's a chopper back to Hawkins. Flips it over to first. Ben Columbus for out number one. And the quick out you just saw there by Corbin Hawkins was a big part of his role played on Tuesday in helping Nebraska get their amid, their first midweek win in a long time this year. They've struggled against it, especially with Nebraska, Omaha, and Creighton earlier this year. And obviously, San, uh, not San Diego State, <laughs> South, South, Dakota, Dakota State. South Dakota State on Wednesday. That hits Boston Marilla, and he'll take his pitch. So first pitch Marilla sees from Hawkins, drills him right off of the knee, and that does not feel good. Yeah, the ball did not break exactly when Hawkins wanted it to. And the spot that he threw it at, if it would have fully had that break and reached its full spin rate, that would have been a beautifully placed ball, but just doesn't go the way he wants. Brady Council, ground ball that is to Anderson. Flips over to Matthews for one. Back to first, double play. And the inning is over. Stretch time in Lincoln. Connor Whitgriff still on the hill for Minnesota. He's gone two and a third so far. First pitch is chopped over to shortstop. Play is made, and that is out number one for out number one. Ben Columbus steps up to the plate. Columbus 0 for 2. He also walked in that fourth inning where Nebraska scratched across eight runs, takes a first pitch strike, middle middle at 82 miles an hour. Oh, one swing and a miss. Well out in front of that one at 83 miles an hour. Columbus down 0-2. Defense for Minnesota out there in right. Hokinson is playing deep into right. It's a step in front of the warning track, the 0-2. Strike three right down the middle, and Columbus goes down looking for two quick outs. I'm someone, the game is never over until the game is over. It, you want to extend and further your lead right now. Nine to three, that's not enough in my opinion. You have to keep going, find a way. And you know, it starts with Josh Karen's approach here and with two outs, get a two out rally going. That's what they did back, back in the fourth inning. Oh, one misses outside for ball one. That was the same exact case yesterday in the seventh inning. A two out rally scratched across five runs for Nebraska. 1-1 one, one misses low. You're right, you're talking about the game is never over until it's over. We see that all the time at the MLB level. You know, regardless of team, regardless of player, it always happens. It does. 2-1, Karen fly ball into center field, backing up his Bateman, now coming on in, makes a good catch. That was about a six inches away from hitting the grass, and the inning is over. We go to the eighth, this catch made by Bateman, Retires the side. Nebraska leads Minnesota 9-3 on Big Ten Plus. But I also believe Gabe Swanson, and he looked at it, and he watched it fly over his head, and he was like, guys, I can't do anything about that. Just threw his arms up. Pitch inside by Hawkins for ball number one. 
Tyke Mazanga, Shoreview, Minnesota native. Swing and a miss there on the inside. Flew out last time in the sixth. Singled in the third and struck out swinging in the first. As that one is driven out into right center field. Diving! Burnham out in center field makes that catch. Isn't it third time this round? I say three. I say a lot of funky things. Okay. It's, yeah. I've kind of third time's up. the charm, three times the charm. I've picked up on that as yeah. we've gone on here today. <laughs> Swing and a miss there. That one trickles back. Two strikes here. Nine to three ball game here. Hawkins. That one gloved beautifully by Columbus and snagged. That ball could not have been more than six inches off the ground. No, there is no way. What a pick over there by Columbus just to Love down and pick it up and say, that is mine. At first, I thought that did end up hitting the dirt. That's what I thought, yeah. Going to have a play, but no play had to be made. I was waiting for Hawkins to work his way over to first. And that one grounded over to Columbus. Ooh, that one took a mean bounce past Ben Columbus. And he's had a couple flashy plays with the leather. He's had to go low, and he's had to go up to take away a few base sets right there. That one... Just sneaks right by him. That one looked like it was going for his head. So all Columbus can do is get out of the way there. And up to bat here is Kyle Bork. Bork in that DH spot. Has doubled twice and walked. As Hawkins plans that one. Low and outside for ball one. Bork batting 216 and 211 with two outs. Only 136 with runners on is that ball. There's a wild pitch there, and Perry advances over to second. And I think that's sometimes the risk you draw with someone who has a funky delivery, even with a catcher like Josh Karen, who can be used to it. Sometimes that ball will take a spin that you won't even expect. No, not at all. And you're right, it's about that funky delivery where he, he's throwing it from right about his hip, but maybe a little higher. It's not the typical, you know, over the head or matched with the head. He's thrown low. That one inside. Bork takes the walk. So runners on first and second with two outs. Just a bit. Just a slight hair. As he takes strike one to the outside there. But like you talk about, Bobby, did anyone think Nebraska was going to put up 18 runs yesterday or eight runs in the fourth inning? No, this is how it starts. It's these little plays. That one's chopped foul. And they did it with two out hitting yesterday, too. And that's how they did it in the fourth inning as well. A lot of two out hitting. And Bobby, how many outs are on the board? Two. Good man. So two out hitting. Who knows? Will it work for Minnesota here in this eighth inning? Stay tuned to find out. We'll keep it here, obviously. Game action. We're not still going, going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Te teasing, teasing the audience a little bit. Give them a little outro talk and then keep it right here. Is that one. I was going to say, unless we hit, what, what's your tea time today? 4.57? 4.57 is my tea time today, yes. <laughs> you just checked your wrist with no watch on. I, I'm like, oh, as that one is driven out in the left field, that one scooped up by Swanson, rounding his parry. There might be a play at the plate, and that one did not, that throw just did not have enough energy behind it. And that is an RBI single for Hokinson. And just like that, Minnesota slowly clawing their way back as that breaking ball to the outside was clubbed by Hokinson in the left field. Yeah, that one just right over the head, a good piece of hitting from Hokinson. And a lot of good two-out hitting that we've seen so far, not only in the series, but today. Swing and a miss there. And Swanson, someone who does not have a hit this series, would be massive for him to break this little dry spell. And I would say go right, right center field. Late swing there, propels that one. 
to the right, but fouled away. 0-2 count with two outs. He struck out twice, both of them swinging, and has flown out as well. Yeah, if it was a quarter second early, he'd have made me look really smart right there. <laughs> it's always nice to have a couple plays like yeah. that, right? Reset here by Hawkins. Delivers. That one outside, one and two the count. 75 mile an hour breaking ball. Not even close to the zone. Swenson sees that one and fouls that towards the Nebraska dugout, heads up. The senior with a chance to get Minnesota back in this one. Pops that one up, and that goes way foul. Another pitch that probably could have landed near that circle where home plate is, and the wind takes it five rows behind the netting. You just gotta be careful. You gotta yeah. be careful there. That ball comes fast. You might be looking up into the sun. Delivery by Hawkins. That one fouled back again. Heads up in the press box. One and two again for the third time in a row. That one driven over to Matthews and Short scoops it over to Anderson and in time. Huskers allow one run, but they had two runners on at one point. And Bryce Matthews to Max Anderson, that defensive telepathic connection works in conjunction there. And the Huskers get out of a bit of a troubling top of the eighth with only allowing one run. They're up to bat with a nine to four lead heading into the bottom of the eighth. Cole Evans set to lead off for the Big Red. That eight nine spot has been so crucial for Nebraska today. On top of that, Evans has a three run home run as well to add on top of that. How important is it, Bobby, when your eight and nine hitter are getting the job done? Oh my goodness, very important. Very important. Because you know on top of that, the top of that lineup, you have got great hitters of whoever it is, regardless of the team. But if your eight and nine can also do the job and you know everyone says, you know, you put your worst hitters down there. No, not necessarily. Sometimes you want to have some of your better hitters, not your best, obviously but really solid contact hitters towards the bottom just in order to drive runs of that middle part of the lineup. Also having a really complete team helps with that too. Yes, yes it does. <laughs> Fouled back by Evans there. But I've seen a lot of MLB teams that when they were at their peak of their success, they had a good nine hitter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you trying to think of one right now? I have one in mind, but I think I know who, which team you're talking about here. Uh, I, I wonder, can you make a guess here? My guess would have been the 2016 Chicago Cubs. Or is that, well, is they that? bumped Addison Russell up. I was actually going okay. more for 2015 when they had Russell okay. when he first came up, and they had him batting ninth. And I know Joe Madden was not only notorious for that, is there's a swing and a miss there, a big cut by Cole Evans, and a, another punch out. Really solid, solid outing. You wonder if he comes in just a little earlier, maybe when they initially have that pitching meeting back with one or two outs in the fourth inning. Does he get out of it? Is there's a big cut by Matthews, and quickly it's 0-2. I think we're talking about a totally different game if he does if he is brought in a little bit earlier. Yeah, Holitz had a meeting called as that one is grounded right back up to Whitgriff. And that is a routine play over to first to Niels for a quick second out. But then you call that you call that meeting at the mound and suddenly things changed big time and the Huskers, once this eighth inning is up, could be three outs away from taking this series. One and one count to Casey Burnham. Been hit by a pitch today, nearly hit there.
Rick Griffith, 52 pitches. You love to see that length from a reliever. And for Ooh. the second time today, Ooh. ouch! For Casey Burnham, you hope he's okay. And he walks that one off and Burnham still second in the Big Ten in hit by pitches, but he is one spot away from being tied for the most hit by pitches in the Big Ten. He is now at 17 on the year again. <laughs> Don't discredit yourself. No, I'm, I had a good comeback here in sixth grade, but that was about it. That one's way inside Burnham advancing over to second. And picks up that bag, and Huskers with a runner in scoring position for Max Anderson. An impressive outing yesterday, going four for six. Hopefully to use up everything that he had yesterday on today. Big cut there from Anderson, and he's swinging a dead air there. But Bryce Matthews, 0 for 4 today. Yeah, he got plunked and, and took his base, so that on-base streak continues for the stellar Nebraska shortstop. But Anderson did reach on a fielder's choice, but has yet to have a clean hit on the day. Again, you say that over and over again for guys like Matthews and Anderson, and it just doesn't resonate. Burnham with a big lead off at second. Anderson cuts that one. It's driven out to center field. Back at the wall goes Bateman. That one's out of here. Cowabunga, Max Anderson sends that one yard. And there's a fan running in the trees to retrieve that ball. Anderson rounding third. Now has the team lead in home runs with 16 this year. There's Gabe Swanson, who's homered in every game Ooh. this year. Heads up, Nebraska. Watch out. Hopefully everyone's okay down there. See, back to Little League, that's why I'm a big fan of like the 10-foot high fences. You don't have to worry about it. That are chain link too. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then you get to climb up them, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were told not to do that. I don't know what you guys did. Yeah, we were in a rowdy Little League, Bobby. Okay. When your team, when I have a combined three wins in two years, you start finding ways to entertain yourself during the games. <laughs> Three wins is a team? Had one win when I was in fifth grade. We had two wins when I was oh in sixth boy. grade. Oh, boy. And I was on the Dodgers, too. The Dodgers were, we were, you know. It's supposed to be good. We're supposed to be. So it's supposed to be good. So it changed. Did it change every year, or was yeah. it the same team every year? Nope, nope. Uh, okay. It changed every year. It was weird. It was like parents kind of got to. Yeah. They were coaches, yes. and then they picked their players. So yeah. obviously, they it's not their... so much the team name that's consistently good. It's more of, okay, who's coaching, and that's kind yeah. of the. Here's a two and one count. That one driven out into right field. Will the wind give Gabe Swanson a hand? No. Just because the parents would, they would pick the regulars. It was the same way. I don't know if you ever played YMCA basketball. Mm -mm, no. So I did, and it was the same way. You just look at it. Whoever was like the team quote unquote captain, he, you just knew, oh, that team's gonna be good because all the regulars were there. You know, you have Jim, Tim, and and Tyler are all, you know, they're all on the same team again. They're all on yeah. the Suns again. As that one's outside to Swanson. Full count with two outs. Gosh, you're taking me back. Yeah, it's been a while. Wow. Those were the days. Yeah. Solid seven years ago plus. Time flies. And that ball flies foul. Ooh, that one definitely heads up for the cars. That yeah. one was smoked foul. So we'll do full count again here. 11 to 4 the score. After a Max Anderson two-run home run. Swing and a miss by Swanson. Whitgriff was doing very well up until this inning when Max Anderson sent one yard to center field. It's an 11-4 ball game, and the Huskers are three outs away from taking this series here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon on Big Ten Plus. Struck out eight and walked three. Last time up, his last appearance was on Wednesday as he delivers a first pitch strike. Brett Bateman is against 
South Dakota State. It was a no decision. Worked one and a third's inning. Allowed three hits, one earned run, two strikeouts, and a hit by pitch. That one's lined over the middle. Heads up. Jalen Worthy. Worthy had to get out of the way there, and Bateman sends that one to dead center field and is on with a leadoff single. Very here in the top of the mound. Very fortunate that didn't hit him. That was, that was close. That one lined right at Worthy. Stuck his glove up, still attempted to make the play, but had to lean back. And Marilla playing left field. That's 361 with runners on. But no outs, Minnesota trying to put together one last run. It would have to be a miraculous one. We need at least seven runs. Boston Marilla hit by a pitch back in the seventh. Had a bunt single back in the first. That was all part of that quick Minnesota start in the first inning. Where hitters went two for two. The first two hitters went to combine two for two and then kind of went downhill for a little bit for the offense and then picked back up later in the game. Yeah, unfortunate for Gopher fans, not able to scratch anything across in that first inning either. Worthley throws that one high, three balls. No strikes here. Ranked the 82nd left-handed pitcher in his class. And that would be the class of 2022. That one is over the middle, but it's high. And the runner is at first after the walk. Bateman advances to second. So a single and a walk here for Jalen Worthley here in the top of the ninth. Not exactly how Will Bolt wants this one to start, and Josh Karen has a quick meeting with the freshman Southpaw on the mound. Thirds innings worked this year, so not a whole lot of playing time under his belt, but delivers a strike there. So, Bobby, what do you look for in someone like Jalen Wordley, who's a freshman, hasn't pitched a ton this year? In in this kind of scenario where you're leading 11 to 4, are, are you content with him taking his time, maybe not getting all three outs right away? Or are you looking for Bang, 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 one, two, three outs right away. No, in a seven-run game, you just want to see what he's got. That's the reason why he's in this situation right now. Will Bolt, if if he wanted to be bang, 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 he's not going to Jalen Worthley. He wants him to just kind of settle in and see where he's at and just get a little bit of confidence and show off his stuff like that pitch right there. Yeah, big cut there by Council. Council, I think I might have jinxed him today. I told him. <laughs> I was like, he's going to have a big day today. And he went 0 for 4 yesterday. I don't think that'll happen again. And unfortunately for Council, it's happened. That went inside to Brady Council. He's, on the, he's in danger of going 0 for 5. Grounded into a double play in the seventh, grounded out in the fifth, flew out in the third, and struck out swinging in the first. Council drives that one right back over to Worthley. It goes off the up. Anderson over to Matthews, over to first to Columbus. Not in time, but wow, what a sequence of events there as it nearly hit Worthley. It's like playing pinball on the field. That ball is going bing and then bang and then bounce. But and look at that. I mean, off the, off the bump, nearly hits the ump, and defense does a good job of holding composure. I think that's the best case Nebraska could have seen. It's also probably one of the worst cases Minnesota could have seen, you know, Brady Council, that's that's one. If that hits off the mound correctly, that could have gone well and above the umpire's head. Or if that's something that skips, you know, over the mound, might get through for a single. So that will not be ruled a hit for Council, which means unless something miraculous happens with Minnesota and they come around the order again, Council has one hit this series. Yeah, and that is not the series he was hoping for. So much talent as a young sophomore. He wants to put on display. But baseball is a journey, right? Every other sport, you look for production right away. Baseball, you have, no matter what league it is and what level of play, you have a lot of games. So yes. you can see that development. It's about the ups and the downs and how you really combat those downs and work work your way back to having more ups. You know cold streaks are going to happen. Yes. It's something that's going to happen. It's all about how are you going to respond as a player. 
Runner going here. Check swing take. Runners on second and third. Council steals second. That's his ninth stolen base on the year. Bateman, the speedster at third. So the double play ball, most likely out of question here as Mazanga takes that one outside. Three and one the count. And one more ball by Worthley could result in bases loaded. There is movement out there in that Nebraska bullpen. It's be impressive if Worthley can work his way out of this. That one swung out to right field. Does the wind give him a hand? No. It's caught by Evans. Runner tagging up at home. 11 to five. The Gophers. Slowly cut their way in. Bateman scores. And Council holds it second. Josh, I don't know about you, but I think this has been a really good response from Minnesota. Getting down early, 9 to nothing. They've done a good job putting up three in the sixth, one in the eighth, and now already one in the ninth. Very good response from Minnesota. I mean, you're not always going to get all those runs back, but it's important to just keep fighting. Yes. And keep those numbers moving, keep the production moving, both on the pitching side of things and in the batter's box. Because every game is important. You don't just want to waste a game because you're down 9-0. Yeah. Minnesota has continuously fought today. And their efforts, in my opinion, have been valiant. I think so, too. I think it's been a very solid effort today on their part. Obviously, the pitching wasn't uh, there. The defense really struggled early. That was a big reason why eight runs were able to cross the plate in that third. That one skied high. And Karen scoops it up behind the plate. The Huskers take the series two to one in the rubber match here for this Sunday matinee. Huskers win 11 to five. Karen with the put out behind the play to end this one. And the Huskers, Bobby, they jumped on Minnesota early. They did, and a big reason for that was that eighth inning with a lot of two out hitting as well. You saw the home run that was hit in that fourth inning by Max Anderson. Just an incredible job offensively. The pitching went out and did its job. Yesterday, Jace Kaminska did a wonderful job pitching for Nebraska. But today, an even better response from Will Walsh going out and doing his job very well. So Bobby, who is your player of the game? That's a good question. Let me check really quickly. If anything, you know, oh, player of the game here might be going uh, might be going Cole Evans. Obviously, Ben Columbus had a very good day in the field. Went up, took away a hit. Went down, took away a hit. Just a very solid defensive outing on behalf of Nebraska. But I think Cole Evans, a very solid day. Had the double, had the three-run home run that kind of broke this thing open for Nebraska in that fourth inning. Just a very solid outing on his behalf. Yeah, the Huskers really had a complete performance offensive-wise. They hit the ball out of the park, and they had, had many, in my opinion, gold-glove-worthy defensive plays for his Minnesota. Pitching was really good at the start of the game, but at the end of the day, once the bullpen came into Nebraska, figured out, okay, how can we jump on the pitchers? They saw the pitches really well, and they took early swings. Take, a, take away that third inning. They've only scored three runs on the day.